Hello, I want to do a video on what I call self-organizing, but <clears throat> it really has to do with how we organize drills and concepts and teach them. And the idea of self-organizing is that we put players into a certain learning environment. And no matter what we do, they will self-organize themselves based on the, the word is the constraints or the, the rules or the, the different things that are happening within that drill. So it's up to us to make sure that the environment that our players are training in makes or fits the way we want them to organize themselves. So let's have a look here. So here's a goal a coach has that they want to work on their spacing and movement off penetration and the decision making in penetration. So the coach saw a drill and liked this drill and and start using practice. So we have four players in what we call the wings and the swings and there's no defense at first because the coach wants them to work on this movement and spacing. So the drill starts with just the players passing it around the outside but there's an assumption that uh, this is realistic. And again, we're starting with an on-air drill. And one of the major problems with this is we assume that the players can actually picture the defense. Now, if this was NBA or WNBA players or high-level, uh, even high school players, we know they can probably picture. But with younger players, a lot of times, they cannot picture defense. They're not ready yet to be able to make that picture in their brain. So you'll see a lot of passes with the inside ha hand, which if there was a defender would easily be stolen. And again, it's a stationary pass to a player single gap away. These are probably not realistic pa passes. And there we go. So we make, the, again, there was no connections. Maybe there was no talking of names. They never looked at each other. They're just passing the ball around because that's what the drill is. So they have self-organized themselves in a way to do this drill efficiently, which is not probably going to work once we put defense in. And then what's supposed to happen is all of a sudden the coach will give a, a verbal cue. So maybe the coach says go. Well, the reaction that they're going to make is not realistic to what the cue is in the game. So again, they've self, they're self-organizing themselves to a non-natural cue. So on the go, they drive to the basket, and there's no real decision here because there's no one helping out. There's no, who should I read? They're just doing a pattern that the coach has told them to do. So in this case, the coach said pass back, and then make an extra pass, and there's going to be a shot. So when the shot goes up, Again, there's no rebounding spots, no safety. So it's a very simple on-air drill, but again, is it going to transfer and get retained? And that's our big question. How do we make sure that it transfers and retain? And remember, the players have self-organized themselves in a certain way based on what we've allowed done in the drill. I would argue that we should always try to start hard first or whole part whole. Allow the players to see the entire picture, start them in form four, let them play, see how they're doing things. Now when you go to maybe more breakdown drills, they will have a better understanding of what it is you're talking about. I really believe in this idea of hard first. Let them start with the concept with defense so they get to see the whole picture and you get to accurately evaluate how they are able to handle it. You could build in rules. They have to make so many passes before they're allowed to try to score. But starting hard first is, again, one of the best ways to make them have to self-organize the way the drill would be in the game. Okay, so let's say we've done that. Now we want to go to some breakdowns. So, again, breakdown, we're going to break it down. One of the key things is the rule of three. You can probably only emphasize three things at a time. So this may be our first breakdown drill. We really want to work on the passing and then being able to react to the cue. So we're going to make sure that they connect by calling eyes and names. They're going to pap, pass with the outside hand and step, it, step to pass, step to receive. And they've got to be looking at the rim. So when the coach gives a visual cue, they have to react and drive to the basket. So. We're going to have to call the name, stepping, both players are stepping with their hands to receive the pass, shortening the pass. Again, we call the name, we shorten our pass, using the outside hand, again we pivot. Now the coach has stepped in, that is the visual cue. So this player has to realize, oh, that's the cue that I'm going to drive to the basket. So now on the drive, again, the coach can give a guide, and again, this could be a player, and eventually I think it should be a player. The more that you get your players to guide it, more it helps. And therefore, you could have another group going at the other end, and you could be watching both groups. But you have to teach the players how to guide. So again, the player's driven, and now they may have to make a decision. Well, in this case, the player decided on a little snake dribble, pass to the outside player, 
there was a shot and now the coach is here reminding and encourage them and praising them or having breakdown conversations to be in those rebounding spots and safeties. So now this is a good warm up. I think these are good warm up. You're getting the heart rate going, you're getting them moving. They're working on team decision by reading how to move off their teammates and the ball. But if you're using an on air drill, you're really emphasizing proper form and proper connections by talking. Okay, so now you've decided to load the drill. So now you put a, another player here, could be another coach or two players. And again, they've, they've, they've now mastered a little bit of those first things, but you say, we're going to load in a couple other things. So first of all, you want them now to be more realistic. You have to be moving to catch the pass. So the player has to be away from the space, and when they're looked at, they have to actually cut into space. So you've added another layer. Now, in this time, the guide is going to be in the outside player. When the coach goes and guards and plays too much in one side, this is the, the cue to tell me that I have a small advantage and I can now attack the rim. So the player is going to use their crossover attack. The other player helps. And again, this time they decide to drive the baseline, or I call it the highway, and make the pass, and they're just playing off penetration. Shot goes up. We're working on our rebounding spots, and the coach, again, is reminding, encouraging, praising, or having breakdown conversations, or the other teammates are. So again, we've layered it in another guide as they've become more comfortable. So we're building or platforming or, or scaffolding our learning as they go. So now we load in another part. We Now we have two defenders. And now maybe this time we've been practicing for a little while, we can say, okay, we're going to be realistic in our movement out here. So now when we pass, we perform our double gap. When you're looked at, you're going to blast cut. And now we do our pass and cut. So now the outside players are working on their pass cut fill. They're moving. They keep passing and moving. And then all of a sudden, on a cue, or when this player wants to, they're going to randomly guide the top player. And they give a guide. There's a cue for the, for the one-second advantage. They attack. Here's the help defense. This player can pick up whoever they want. Now we're making a read. And there should be an advantage for the player. So we've loaded in another layer. And again, we're starting to get more transferability of our skills. Well, let's load it again. So we now the coach decides to put in the defense. And the coach just decided on this drill that this should transfer and get retained. So what happens, though, a lot of times is we put in a constraint. So what we have is the defense being random. Coach read a book on random. This is great. I'm going to be random. But what happens, again, players will self-organize. So the defense is self-organized. And the coach, the coach, again, gave the verbal cue telling them to go. So this was the signal to drive. So what happens is the player drives. But look what happened. They were driving to an already collapsed defense. Let's go back. This should not be a cue to drive, but the drill told the player to drive. So they drive into collapsed defense. They look to pass to someone who's open. There's no one open and gets stolen. Coach gets mad, puts the players on the line for a turnover, running suicides. But really, it was the defense had self-organized itself in a way to take away or to be efficient. And we have to make sure that how we organize our drills is actually what's happening in the game. So how can we do a little better job on this? So now for transfer and retention, let's have them match up. Now again, all we're saying is you cannot take away perimeter passes. They're just moving. They got to play their pass cut field. They're working on defending passing and cutting. Everybody's moving. But now the coach gives a visual signal and maybe it's only the offense that sees it and the coach raises both arms. All that signals the offense is, look for a one-second advantage. It doesn't mean drive right away. It means you're now live. Look for the small advantage when you have it. And you're hoping that the players can make the right decision. They drive, and now you're in your penetration. You've got your realistic cues. The defense is working on reali realistic scrambling. So you're getting real basketball happening, but you're controlling a little more of what's happening out there for the players. And now they have to self-organize themselves to what's realistic in the game. So when we get the shot, we get our rebounding spots. Okay. The last little piece, maybe as you start to load in, is there's actually some transition. So they've got to get to inbound to outlet, and maybe they're going to play transition. So again, now you've started into play. So you can use this drill and just continue to grow it to actually playing in your game. So I think I'm trying to show is how we can make sure if players we know players are going to self-organize, make sure it's a realistic training environment. Make sure that also all the concepts or skills will transfer and get retrained. And then load your drill. And remember the rule of three. They can only probably remember three things at a time. The rule of ten is 
you probably got about 10 minutes and then you got to change up. That's about as long as you can go with the drill. And then the rule of 30, if after 30 seconds you haven't got it explained, it's probably took too long. It's too complex. Too complex. You should be able to explain your drill in 30 seconds and get them being active. So I hope this drill just gives you a little understanding of how we like to try to build uh, in our drills because we know of how players are going to self-organize. Thank you.